Jason, leave me alone. No, no, Liz, we have to be realistic about this. We have to be prepared. Well, let's see. First, you'll tell her how you did her father in. And then she'll say, All right, Mother, I understand. What else is new? Now, that's what she's going to say, isn't it? I don't know what she'll say. Well, that's why I say you have to be prepared in the eventuality that she doesn't take in too well. I'm prepared to put an end to what you're doing to me. Oh. Well, I sincerely hope you are, my dear. I sincerely hope you have the strength. Because if she gives you the reaction I think she's going to give you, it's going to rock you back on your heels. It's just possible that that announcement can result in Carolyn's hating you for the rest of her life. That's a chance I'll have to take. You mean? You'd rather do that than enter a marriage of convenience with me. I'd rather do anything than that. Well then, suppose you let me fetch her. Yes, Jason. Do that. Now. You know, it will be a very interesting account for her to hear the details of her own father's murder. Jason? Your mother sent me to fetch you. Did she? Yes. Uh, she wants to speak to you. Thank you. Uh, but uh, could I have just a few wee seconds of your time before you go in to see her? Why? Well, I might, uh, I thought I might offer a little friendly advice. Oh? What is it? Well, I thought that uh, I might suggest that you be uh, particularly, shall we say, diplomatic when you speak to your mother. What does that mean? Well, it's just that uh, she's a very much on edge, you know, quite disturbed. Disturbed about what? Well, about the subject on which she wants to speak. What is the subject? Ah, well, now, I'll have to let her tell you that. I just thought I'd suggest that you try to be as understanding and as open as possible. You know, uh, try not to be offended. Offended? Yes, you see. What are you trying to tell me? Well, I just don't want you to get your mother overwrought, you know what I mean? I I'm not sure. Well, you see, it might be necessary in the course of your conversation with her to uh, differentiate between uh, what is reality and uh, what is imaginary. Jason, I don't understand. Well, uh, and uh, please, do me a favor. Uh, don't uh, mention to her that we had this conversation about her. I can assure you, she'd be furious. I'm sure she would be. Thank you, anyway, for whatever it is you were trying to tell me. Yes, I do. What about? Something very important. Mother, you seem upset. What's the matter? I have to tell you something I've put off for much too long. You're not going to tell me about the birds and bees, are you? Carolyn, this isn't any time to be funny. I I'm sorry. I, I thought it might make you feel better. Please, what is it? I have to tell you about my life. Mother, you don't have to tell me anything. Which will explain why I've lived the way I have and why I've said and done the things I have. You sound as though you're about to make a confession. That it, that's it exactly, a confession. Mother, if this is upsetting you, you can tell me some other time. Oh, I have to tell you now. If I don't tell you now, I may never have the courage again. All right, but please, calm down. 
We have to go back 18 years when I was younger and was happy. I believed in living life to the fullest and foremost. But in recent years, my, my life has been anything but that. Except for you, darling. I have been existing in the shadows of this house. Mother, I know what your life has been. It isn't necessary for you to remember it. But I have to, Carolyn. It's the only way I can free myself. The only way I can stop punishing myself for the things I've done. What things have you done? Well, before I tell you that, you have to know more about your father. Yes, I'd like to. I never knew him. Nor did he know you. Mother, what do you mean, he didn't know me? Let me tell you about him so you'll understand. I was so in love with your father, I couldn't see, hear, or think. He was so strong and dominating, he kept me continually off balance. I, I thought he loved me, but he didn't. He never loved me. He never loved anyone. Mother, this is too painful for you. It would be painful for you, too. Why, Mother? I I'm not sure I want to hear anymore. But you must, because it affects no, you. No, it doesn't affect me. And I can't go through hearing you tell me something it's not necessary to tell. But you have to know about your father. I can't tell you an important thing until you do. Your father never loved you either. Mother, please don't tell me anything like that. It's true. He never wanted you. He thought children represented responsibility and took away his freedom. He seldom even looked mother, at you. please, no. He never held you in his no, arms. please, no. I don't ever remember seeing him kiss Stop you. Stop it, Mother. I can't listen to another word. Carolyn, wait. I don't know why you're telling me these things, but I know you're not yourself. Carolyn, he was a terrible man. He was cruel. Carolyn? I see it went badly. It did. Did she tell you about your father? Yes. Did she tell you anything else? I don't know how much there was to tell. She told me what a terrible person my father was. And nothing else? I didn't let her go any further. You mean... You never let her finish? I stopped her. We were both upset. I didn't want to listen to another word. And that was all she said? Jason... You once told me things about my father. Good things. Now my mother's telling me bad things. I don't know who to believe. Well, now, Carolyn, I want you to believe your mother. But you must understand how she feels after 18 years. Jason, there's something I have to know. And I I'd like it answered with all honesty. Did my father ever talk about me? Oh. Incessantly. Who couldn't shut him up? <laughs> you know, he used to carry a small photograph of you in his wallet. And, well, he'd just show it to everyone. Anyone who would look. <laughs> it was a bearskin rug type of thing. <laughs> Did he ever hold me? Well, now, how was it he used to put it? Let me see. He has such a marvelous way of describing everything so vividly. Ah, yes, he used to say that your weight was no more than three tiny pink feathers. Hug you? Of course he did. He used to say you were like a little... 
Oh, what would I say? Papoose doll. <laughs> Wrapped tightly in your blankets. And you were like a flower, fragrant with the powders and the oils. And, and how he used to kiss the, the little blonde hairs on your head. Then you'd say that, that he loved me. Oh, more than any other woman in the world. Including your mother, I'm sorry to say. I am a Collins. And that means I am a man of my word. You understand that, don't you? I promised the doctor you'd give him a sample of your blood. No, please, I wouldn't dare. And why not? They'll know all about me. I won't let him take it. I won't let him take my blood. I promised, and I always keep a promise. Well, why are you going to do this? You have as much to lose as I do. Please don't. Please. I'm sorry, Willie. Now you must calm your nerves. The doctor will be here presently. No. Please. Please. You sure Willie's gonna let you take a blood sample? No, well, Barnabas gave me his word. He said Willie was convinced that he had to cooperate. Well, Barnabas convinced him before, and it didn't work. I know, but if Willie doesn't cooperate this time, he can be served with a court order. He could be charged, you know, with harboring a dangerous disease. The same one Maggie had. There's more to it than that. There's more to Maggie's disappearance than a rare blood disease. Well, of course there is. But my main concern at the moment is trying to understand what I saw in that blood sample. We might see it again in Willie's blood, you know. And if you do? Well, if we do, we'll continue with examining Willie. It's conceivable that we might be able to uh, identify the disease precisely. And we could find out how he contracted it, where he contracted it. We might even be able to find out... Uh... What? What, Dave? No, I'd better not say that. I'd better stick to what I think is possible. Come on, Dave, tell me. What? Well, how could diagnosing a disease tell us who took Maggie from that hospital? There's a great deal more than some blood abnormality involved here. At least in Maggie's case. Listen, Dave. The other day, you used the word impossible to, to describe what you saw in, the, in Maggie's blood sample. Well, not what I saw, what I thought I saw. Well, could Maggie's disease or condition or whatever you want to call it, could it have been caused by an animal? A wild animal. Well, why do you say that? Well, to be specific, could it have been caused by a wild or, or rabid dog or wolf? Why? Well, when Vicky was uh, staying with Maggie, remember? Yeah. She said she, she heard dogs howling right outside of uh, Maggie's door. Then when we went inside, we found those terrible uh, gash marks in her neck. None of the tests that were done on Maggie indicated that. Besides, Berkless, no dog or wolf got in this office and stole that blood sample. It, it, it was a man, a madman, who didn't want us to get too close a look at those slides. Willie. What? Willie Loomis. Why didn't he, he, he want you to take a sample of his blood? Now, listen, a lot of people are squeamish, uh, even terrified of having blood taken from them. I'm sorry, Burke. I just can't see Willie Loomis as a possible su suspect. Besides, to begin with, he wouldn't have had strength enough to do what was done to this office. The, remember the bars on the window? Even in a crazy state? Even in a crazed condition. Well, it was just a thought. Vicky and I are going to have a drink at the Blue Whale. Could you join us later? No, I doubt it. I'd like to find out how you make out. Well, I'll try. But I warn you, it's going to be pretty late. Dave, this is not just idle curiosity. Unless we find out exactly what's going on, no one is safe. Every time I look at Vicky, I get scared. What if something happens to her? I know this is strictly a professional call, 
But I couldn't let you come all the way out here and offer no hospitality at all. Oh, thank you very much. I do have to be getting back to town pretty soon. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, Willie! Dr. Woodard is here. Willie! Ah, there you are. Uh, we shouldn't keep Dr. Woodard waiting. You know, he's a very busy man. Do I have to? Now, Willie, look at it this way. This could, in some remote fashion, help Miss Evans. And it may help you. Now, unknown to yourself, you may have some very tragic malady. Now, the doctor only wants to help. Sit down, Willie. This will just take a minute. Believe me, you're not going to miss the little drop of blood that I take from you. Now, give me a hand. All I need is the tip of your finger. Well, you won't even feel this. Just look the other way. All you're going to feel is a little prick of a pin. Come on. No, please. It uh, may be some comfort to you to know that a great many people share your dislike for giving away your blood. Now, in a way, isn't that understandable? After all, blood is the life force. It reaches in to the deepest recesses of both the heart and the brain. It is the familiar of our complete being. To surrender even one drop of it is to suggest a partial surrender of one's utmost self. Oh, it didn't hurt that much. I shouldn't let you do it. Come on, give me a hand now. Now, you had no choice. Come on. Now, pour the doctor another drink. Oh, really? No, thanks. I have to be getting back. Oh, please, just a little. Willie? I'm uh, not what you'd call a great wine drinker, but I, uh, I must admit this is excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Willie. That will be all, Willie. Now, the doctor and I are both very grateful for your cooperation. Yes, we are. And don't you be embarrassed now by being frightened. Uh, I understand. No, you don't understand. Willie, that will be all. May I uh, see the slide? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. There isn't much to see unless it's under a microscope. Just hold it on the side. Mm, thank you. It's like a delicate little flower painted on glass. Yes, even under the microscope it has a certain beauty. The intricate structure of the cells and great variety of color and shadings. Yes. I guess some of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen in my life have been uh, microscopic views of hideous malignancies. Well, I hope poor Willie doesn't provide you with such an experience. Thrilling though it may be. Of course. And yet, to be honest, you would like to see on that slide a repetition of what you saw in Miss Evans' blood, wouldn't you? As much as I regret to say it, yes. I would. It's a terrible thing to say you hope somebody has an illness, but I can't help it. If this slide shows what I hope it does, it could, in its own way, lead us to Maggie. Oh? How? Well, if we can diagnose it accurately, if we can find out where and how Willie contracted the disease, if we could even prove some connection between Maggie Evans and Willie, but you don't really suspect that Willie's involved, do you? No, not really. But if the blood sample showed some marked similarity, well, obviously, we'd have to go on looking for other connections. We'd have to uh, look very carefully. Well, I must say that uh, I hope that Willie has nothing to do with what's happened to that young girl. I would find it extremely difficult to accept it, even in my imagination. But, as you say, I hope that we may have some clue 
even if it means that Willie has to provide it.